we'll get the microphone on. Sorry about the delay. I don't really know why there was a delay, but software didn't want to cooperate. Okay. I mean, we are on. I think so. So, yeah, maybe just a reminder, if you had any problems with this exercise number five, I see easy peasy lemon squeezy, so that sounds pretty good. No problemo and nothing. Those are all uh, sounding pretty positive, but if you have, you know, things that aren't so positive, this is also a good place to note them. We did not uh, prepare anything in terms of reviewing exercise five. We can maybe take a quick look at it just to maybe jog your memory. I can yeah. Just hold it up. It's probably best if I'm not. Uh, Your laptop too, is it? Yeah. But maybe it's good for you to review this since I didn't put it together. Um, so yeah, I mean, it sounds like there weren't any big problems, so we don't need to spend much of the class time on this today because we do have a fair amount of yeah. material we would like to, to cover. Uh, it should be left up to one, actually, because the HDMI cable came back. Oh, OK. So there we go. Yeah, so I guess most of the problems were kind of following the lesson materials that we had, so I guess there wasn't too many many problems, but now we have. Can you put it in separate lines and make it work? Uh, okay, what do we have here? Okay, so why can't you break the line? Oh yeah, so I guess is it, this is about kind of chaining these commands. The same line as selected data to make it work. Ah, okay. So, yeah. So, the question is uh, maybe we also show it from here. Uh, So the question is like this, the line would be selected, <coughs> so why doesn't this work? Uh, without actually trying it out myself, uh, it's a bit hard to kind of give a good answer, but basically I think what is happening here is that because we are actually <coughs> chaining these two commands. So in the first command, we are actually selecting some data and creating a new data frame, basically. So when we are doing this kind of selection, it's actually uh, making a, <coughs> a copy uh, or view out of the original data frame, and then right away chaining this second command there. So it might be that it doesn't work. Uh, why it is so, uh, it's uh, something that I actually haven't ever thought about, so it's, it's kind of a tricky question, but, uh, but I guess it's, it's somehow because the, the data frame that we are selecting it is not in the memory of, of the computer in, in, in that sense that you can actually chain more commands into that already. So you need to first kind of assign it into a new variable. Uh, Maybe it's something we can take a look at at the break. And yeah. And kind of test. And say yeah. About that yeah. That is maybe the best option here. But that's the first kind of intuition that I have about that question. Right.
Yeah, they just it's temporary. Temporary. Mm, it should. Okay, we can maybe take a look at this during the break and, and see because it should work now. Do you lose, do you lose temp, for instance, when you do selected data with things that don't include temp? Mm, I, I don't know how this Yeah, works. yeah, we need to discuss because we need to see what is happening. <coughs> maybe that's the best option here. Uh, otherwise, there wasn't any 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 questions so we take a look at this during the break and, and let's kind of see it when we continue after after the break uh, I guess if there wasn't any any kind of real issues with the exercise we could continue as we have plenty of stuff to do uh, today uh, so what we are going to do today is to kind of continue working with pandas and and introduce you to a uh, kind of many really useful approaches and functions that Pandas has for actually doing data manipulation uh, and data analysis. Uh, in this week we will again, as, as the, every week this far, thus far, uh, use uh, weather data uh, from Helsinki Wanta uh, Airport, where we have these kind of hourly uh, uh, weather data including temperatures, wind and, and, and so on and what we are kind of aiming at in the end to try to find weather anom anomali anomalies uh, from, from the data uh, and see if we can find storms uh, from, from Helsinki using, using that data. So that's kind of the goal where we're aiming at and we will uh, introduce you many kind of different uh, things that you should do to actually proceed and, and find those things, uh, many pandas functionalities, how we can deal with the data and, and, and learn some interesting stuff out of it. Uh, after the pandas part, uh, Dave will introduce you uh, kind of how to deal with uh, error messages and, and how to know how to interpret those messages. So kind of we will go through a little bit like uh, because you, you, you can find quite good uh, information from the error messages, so how to kind of read them in a way that you can find out more easily what is, what is the problem that you are having in your code if you receive an error. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, I guess it, uh, the error messages and debugging is, they are kind of combined, they usually go combined when you start debugging something is typically wrong uh, in your in your script <clears throat> and then we have the exercise six that we will shortly introduce you uh, at the end of this lesson uh, there have been kind of uh, wishes to give not so uh, accurate uh, introductions or or kind of uh, directions in the exercise not so detailed uh, and this is what we did this week. So we will add to the hints page uh, more kind of detailed uh, stuff about how to do things, but the actual exercise is more just to give you uh, aim and, and then you just need to find yourself way through, through it and, and find the answers to the problems. Maybe just one thing to add to that, essentially, you know, if you're concerned about not having as much information as you had before, you shouldn't worry because you will have the same amount of information. It's just going to be more of a given in the hints rather than giving a detailed sort of step-by-step -step instructions in the exercise. So that, you know, those of you who have a little bit of programming experience already can kind of come up with your own ways to solve the problems. And those of you who are looking for a little bit more guidance, you could find that same guidance we gave previously in the exercise, now in the exercise hints. Yeah. And, uh, and probably there will be a decently long list of things in this week's exercise hints. But yeah, yeah, I think we'll see. There will be. Uh, but basically now you have, this is the sixth week of your programming and basically the last problem in this exercise is already basically that you should yourself go and find data and start doing data analysis. So 
it doesn't take that long to actually be in that sta stage where you can actually start doing things yourself. Cool. Uh, but as said, let's continue to the uh, first part. So processing data with pandas or advanced data processing uh, with pandas. <coughs> uh, this time I hope the download links should work. At least they worked uh, in the morning. Well, they did also last week, but let's see now. So there is the this kind of uh, data file that looks like looks something like this and you can download it under this link. So I will now do and with the right click and save link as I should be able to do I put it the home directory and where can I Oh yeah. Cool. So I downloaded it here. Just save. And basically what we have in the data file is this kind of information. Uh, in During the earlier weeks we have had kind of done some kind of uh, pre-processing of the data to make it easier for you to read. Uh, this week this is the data that we get when we are downloading it. So now it's kind of the data uh, directly from the data provider. And basically now we <coughs> see how we can actually read that data in a way how it is presented. So first of all, what you can see from here is that we indeed have these different variables. They are the same as, as in earlier lesson. Uh, so we have the station uh, ID here, then we have the uh, date information and so on. But instead of uh, this file to be comma separated, so now we can see that we actually have this kind of varying amount of spaces between the, the variable. And we need to be able to read uh, that kind of data in, so kind of uh, use it as a separator varying amount of spaces. And we will see how we can do that. So that's basically uh, <coughs> about the data. Uh, what we are first going to do is that we use a small sample of data where we have hourly, uh, well actually even more accurate than, than hourly, so we have one observation per 20 minutes and we start doing stuff with, with that data and, and first of all try to aggregate it into an hourly level data. Cool. Uh, this week, uh, important thing to notice if you're following this, this lecture and doing it uh, <clears throat> at the same pace as I do, is that you should write all your codes uh, similarly as, as I do into this weatheranalysis.py script, because we are actually going to use it later and, and pro uh, use that script to uh, process larger chunk of data than what we do now during the during the lesson so just that you know cool uh, let's see I will launch the spider yeah so okay here we have the spider ready that seems to be in the memory, this old stuff that we showed you. I will just quickly add so some information here. So what we are doing uh, was the weather analysis using uh, data from Helsinki. So some idea what we are actually doing here. <coughs> Cool. Uh, so as always, when we when we are starting uh, using uh, pandas, we of, of course need to import it. So import pandas as pd. Uh, and as said, so this time I will read most of the code now into the script, and then I will actually execute those lines of codes in the terminal. Uh, and how you can actually execute a single line of, of the from from this uh, script is that if you are on, on that line that you have written and then you press uh, F9 
do I need to press some uh, command key or function, function key? Yeah. yeah. So, so if you press F9 uh, in Mac function key, F9 button, then what it will happen is that it actually executes that that line of code in the in the terminal. So you don't actually need to copy and paste. It's much easier easier that way. So now we have imported pandas. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is to specify the uh, file path for the data. So we downloaded the data, and now we need to say that where our data is. So my data should be located in this user's WIP uh, folder uh, and I will specify <coughs> a file path there. So I just copy and paste users slash WIP slash and then I need to know the name name of the file that I downloaded. Uh, it should be here. So it should be something like this. So I just copy and paste it from directly from here, uh, like this, and copy. And let's see if it works. So now we have the uh, full path to the file that we will read in. In Windows, again, remember, use the R character in the beginning of the file path so that you don't mix up with the uh, escape characters such as new lines. Uh, okay, so now we have the file path, then we want to read the data. So I will execute this. So as said, pressing F9 button will execute it, uh, the line of code in the, in the console. And then, uh, so what we need to do to be able to read this kind of data in with a uh, varying uh, number of spaces is to kind of take a notion of, of this. This is from the documentation of, of pandas. And, and by the way, every time when you are kind of interested about we, if we are using some function, so of course there is a lot of documentation in the official do, uh, documentation of pandas. So just Google the function name. <clears throat> with word pandas and you will find the more more stuff about the uh, functions that we are using. Uh, but so this is from the official documentation and there is this kind of notion that uh, in addition separators longer than one character and different from this will be interpreted as regular expressions. But basically if we have <coughs> uh, more than one space and, and varying amount of spaces uh, between the variables, we can actually take advantage of this uh, expression when we are reading the data data in. So let's do that uh, again. So read the data. So I will create a variable called data and how I can read the CSV file that we have or, or text file in this case is that we use the read CSV function. And then we have plenty of arguments that we can use for reading the data in. The first argument always is, of course, what is the data file that you want to read? So in my case, it's the variable FB that has the full file path to the data. I will now just test that the uh, file path that I have is, is correct. Yeah, it seems to be. So it, it was able to read it in. If I just check first five uh, rows of data from, from that, we can see that, okay, we, we have something here. Uh, we have the spaces and we have some no data characters, which are the stars that are also a varying number. So we need to also take care of those. So let's continue from here. So what we need to do First of all, we need to be able to separate these columns uh, in, uh, or separate these uh, attributes into separate columns. Uh, Can I interrupt for just a second? Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you're having any problems with loading the data file or whatever, just let us know and yeah. Okay. It'll so be easier to follow along, of course, if you can get the data file. 
Should we wait a minute to get this done? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So. Okay. I, I can. Okay, great. So now everyone should have the data ready for the analysis. Uh, so let's continue. So the idea uh, here was that how can we read the data uh, with varying uh, number of spaces between the, the attributes in our data. So what we can do is to use the SEP parameter which is determine the separator and how we can specify that use varying number of spaces is to uh, let's check that it goes correctly 
So backslash s plus. So this is uh, not really intuitive, but it's this magical word uh, or piece of character saying that uh, please use spaces that might be uh, unevenly uh, between the uh, attributes. So that's it. Uh, let's see if I run this now, what do we have? So again, F9, and then we can <coughs> uh, then we can have the data in. Again, I use the data head uh, function. And now, indeed, now we seems to have that we have five rows and 33 columns. So now we have the data uh, separated into different columns and we are okay. Uh, still, what we have here is that we have the no data values with the star characters uh, and we need to deal with them. There was similar thing done in the exercise 5, so you have already done this before. So how we can uh, deal with this uh, is that we have this uh, specific uh, parameter uh, with the read CSV function called na underscore values. And here you can specify whatever uh, characters <coughs> that there might be in your data file that should be read as no data. And in our case, we will specify a list of different uh, list of uh, stars that might be uh, varying length with varying length. So it can be one star up to actually six stars. So we have varying. Uh, it differs. Uh, in the data that we have, how many stars are representing the uh, the no data? So I will just mm, yeah, copy and paste this from here. Um, then I just add it to to the function. Yeah. So now we should have our <coughs> read CSV function uh, determined as this and then we can see what comes out of it when we executed it and then again it's always good to check your data every now and then so basically almost after each step at least when you are actually uh, when you are dealing with new data and when we are dealing with new kind of functions that you're using, always remember to check your data uh, regularly. So now we can see that, okay, instead of having those stars, we have the NAN, so not a number uh, values here that are basically, uh, yeah, they are non-values. Non so now we are good to kind of continue with the, with the stuff that we have. Okay, so we have already kind of uh, checked the data uh, and we have quite many <coughs> different columns, it seems. Uh, let's actually see what kind of columns do we have. So how was it possible to check the columns in your data frame was to use this data dot columns and without parentheses. So it's an attribute of, of the data frame. And as we can see from here, uh, yeah, we have 33 columns and all sorts of different variables. I don't even remember what all of them are. But the thing is that this is quite often the case that you have plenty of data and you are not necessarily interested in all of them. So it's quite good in the beginning, clean your data uh, from uh, those unnecessary uh, columns that you are not interested. This is of course a bit like you need to, if you are just exploring data that you don't know at all, uh, you might not know what is interesting and what is not. So this is kind of uh, uh, those kind of uh, situations that you need to consider uh, if you like to give everything or not. But in this case we know that we are not interested about every one, every attribute of, of these we are only interested in this temperature column. Then we are interested, well, we need to know about the time. So we have this column here. 
the SPD is the wind speed. So that is uh, also interesting for us as we are trying to find out the stormy uh, weathers uh, it, from our data. This gust is gust. So when there are these kind of uh, blows of wind, so this is uh, that kind of information is reported here. And what else? We have some mm, max and min. So max temperature and mean temperature. So those might be useful as well. So let's select uh, only those columns from our data. So what we want to do, select only uh, interesting columns. Of course, this is uh, relative uh, what might be interesting, but I will now select only those columns that I just mentioned. And first, what I will do is that I will create a list of those columns that I want to keep. Uh, and first of all, I want to keep this one. So I copy and paste it here uh, like this. Um, the next one that I want to have, well, the dir, so the direction of wind might be interesting as well. Maybe not for stormy uh, wind stuff anyway, but let's keep it. Then we have the SPD, so the wind speed, and then um, gus. It was also interesting, so the gust. And then, of course, we are interested about the temperature, as, as always. And then we are interested about the maximum and minimum uh, values, temperature values. So let's use those max and min. Yeah, so now we have uh, plenty of columns that we can use. So what I will now do is that I execute this. Again, there seems to be a problem. Yes, I missed the equal sign here. This is always good if you see this kind of uh, orange triangle in on the left banner here on the, this side. Uh, there is most probably something wrong with your code. So always kind of be aware of that. And then again, so now I created this variable that basically has, so it's a list of those column names, uh, columns, so nothing more yet. So now we can use that list to actually select the data from, from our data frame. So how we can do that is that uh, we specify that uh, kind of put into this data variable so we are actually updating the original data frame that we have. So take only the selected columns from there. So I put inside these square brackets this select columns uh, list that we just uh, created and then when I execute uh, we should have only those columns and we can see if that is true by asking the data columns and indeed now we only have have those we can also check the the head of the file and yeah now it's much easier to to read the data frame instead of having 33 columns now you only have those uh, six or seven uh, columns and and it's easier to see what is actually happening so indeed we have the speed uh, these are miles per hour, uh, we have the temperature, these are the uh, Fahrenheit's and then we have the direction which is the yeah, wind direction and then max and min with lots of uh, non-values. Uh, cool, uh, in this point it's usually always good to always um, check the data types so that we understand a little bit better. So what we are doing here is that we just explore a bit what do we have in the data. Uh, so how we can do that is to use the data.data types. Uh, I will now here and then execute. And then, okay, so it seems that the kind of date information here seems to be integer and we have plenty of integers. The gas seems to be floating point number, uh, max and min seems to be floating point number, temperature seems to be integer as well. 
Okay, so now we understand a little bit better what our data is. So we have numbers, numbers in our data. Uh, what is uh, might be quite often useful is that we have these kind of uh, column names that we uh, wrote here, and these are quite awful. They are not really intuitive. They are really long, especially this one, and, and horrible to re uh, write if you want to get some data out of that. So it is sometimes quite useful that you actually rename your columns. And, and let's see how we can uh, rename those columns to be more intuitive and, and easier to use. So uh, how we can do that, so there is this function called uh, dataframe.rename. Uh, but first we need to kind of specify what is the original column name that we want to change and to what do we actually replace it uh, with. So how we can do that easily in, in Pandas is that we create this kind of dictionary. Uh, we haven't discussed about dictionaries uh, previously, maybe mentioned shortly. But now I will show you what is a dictionary and how we can use it. So let's say that what we want to do is that we create this kind of name uh, conversion dictionary. And I call it, uh, I create a variable called name uh, conversion dict. And how we create a dictionary is that we use uh, curly brackets. So this basically is the way in Python how you can create a dictionary. And what is a dictionary basically is that it's uh, this kind of uh, data object where we can basically, for example, in our case, we specify that what is the kind of uh, uh, original name uh, of the column that we want to change. So in this case, I want to change this uh, name of the column and I just copy and paste it here. So this is the original uh, column name and I want to replace it with a new name called uh, time, which is much more intuitive to understand and much easier to type when you're actually using that variable. So what we are doing here is that indeed we assign this kind of key to this uh, dictionary, uh, which is the original column name, and then we put this colon and then another value, which is the new uh, variable name called time. So this is kind of this kind of pair key and then value pair that we can use, uh, for example, in these kind of situations. So this might be quite ha handy uh, data type to use in, in different situations. Um, might be that we don't use these so much, but but anyway, this is how how they work, and these values can be whatever and these keys can be whatever basically as well. So they can be numbers and strings. Usually there are some strings that you might have a, a key uh, called cars, and then the values are basically a list of different uh, car brands such as Audi, Volvo, and, and, and so on. So that's a dictionary. Uh, okay, but let's then change also some other uh, column names. So let's change the SPD to be speed, which is again more intuitive. And you can separate these with, uh, uh, with uh, comma, uh, these different uh, items in your dictionary. Uh, and then the last thing that we want to change is Gus. And let's change it to be Gust because it's just one letter longer than we have the actual uh, word for it. So now we have created this kind of dictionary. Uh, so let's also check the type. So when we are asking what is the type, so we can see that it, it is actually dictionary. And let's also see that if we 
uh, execute the name so we can see that it's this kind of uh, data object that we have. Uh, cool. Uh, so how can we use this to convert the column names? So as I said previously, uh, we can do it by using the data dot rename, which is quite intuitive. And then inside the square brackets, we basically specify uh, what are the columns that we want to uh, or what is the criteria for renaming the columns and for here we say that the columns parameter equals to uh, name conversions ticked and then when executing this we should have our columns with these new names and indeed we do so so instead of having that ugly uh, column name like this. Now we have time, then we have the deer, which is the direction. Well, this is uh, intuitive enough. The SPD we change to speed, which is again more intuitive. Gust, gust and uh, temp is quite intuitive already, so we need to not need to change that. Cool. Uh, now let's continue exploring our data a bit just by uh, exploring the values uh, with describe. So as you might remember we have this uh, function called data.describe which is quite useful so what we can do is that when we execute that so we can get this kind of basic information about each uh, variable that we have in our in our data frame so we have the count so how many values there are present uh, at different uh, variables what is the mean standard deviation mean and max uh, why what can be interesting in in our case is that okay we can see that there seems to be 72 uh, observations with the speed column uh, temperature and, and so on but with the gust here, we can see that we seems to have seem to have only twenty observation. Uh, so other than those twenty are no data basically. So this is something that kind of pops out here. What is also quite uh, evident here is that this max column and mean column they only have two observations. So we can already at this point say that if we have quite a lot of observations and only two of them uh, in, in, in these two variables have, have data so uh, there is nothing that we actually want to use from these two, two variables here. Uh, with the GUST we might have something interesting from there but let's continue and find out if that is the case but that's any, any, any way something that we could explore further. Cool. Um, what we could do next is that <clears throat> basically when we, what we have done uh, so many times before is that we have converted this temperature into from Fahrenheit into Celsius and last week we kind of showed how to do it just by doing a calculation, uh, a simple calculation using the uh, pandas data frame. Uh, this time we will do the same thing but instead of using the good uh, math functionalities of, of pandas data frames we will actually uh, use the function that we created maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago and use that function into the, in, inside the data frame to do the calculations so that you know and, and see how you can actually specify your own functions uh, and use those with the data frames. So that's the aim of, of, of the next part. Uh, instead of uh, writing the, the function from scratch, I will uh, just go to the website and copy and paste so here you can 
find the somewhere here. So here you can find the, the function that we have used before. Uh, if you have your own function, for example, in the functions.py script, you can always import that function and, and use that. That's highly uh, recommended. But I don't have that file available, so I will just copy and paste this uh, <coughs> to the, my script. Uh, usually, when uh, having functions in your script, usually what you do is that you not here, but uh, after the import statements. So usually how at least I do and I know quite many people do is that we actually put the functions uh, on top of the script. So not that you kind of drop those functions in, in between here that we are doing, but add all those functions on top of your script and then they are first there and then the actual code uh, that is executed uh, is below that. Uh, this way things keep nicely organized and, and, and kind of that's a good way of doing things. So now we have the far to Celsius uh, function added here. What I will need to do to be able to use it, so I need to actually execute this again. Uh, it's also possible to kind of um, take a block of stuff from, from the script and then again use the F9 to execute all of this in the console. And now we should have this uh, far to Celsius in, in our IPython console and we can actually use that. We can also check that. Okay, 20 Fahrenheit seems to be minus 6.6666 uh, Celsius. Uh, always it's good to uh, Remember to save your script once in a while. I actually haven't saved it at this at all. Now I will do that. So in file, you have save as, and now I will save it uh, under, I guess I'm on the correct subdirectory. Sub okay, yeah, so right on click on web and you can put it in the, right here. Yeah. So I will put it here. Uh, and what is the name of the file? Let's see, what was it that I want to... Weather analysis was the name of the file that I want to save. Weather analysis. Uh, this is something that you should always do before you actually write any code. So don't follow my example here. So. Okay, but now what was that thing that we wanted to do? Yeah, so uh, what we want to do is to convert the Fahrenheit temperatures in our, uh, in our data. So these temp into Celsius uh, temperatures. So what we need to do, so we already uh, imported uh, well, not import it, but copy and paste the function here and execute it in the IPython. So this function now is available for us to use. Uh, what I need to do now is that I will create a column for the Celsius uh, temperatures. I'll just do like this so you will see it better. And again, how was it possible to... Uh, create a new column is that I just specify inside the square brackets the name of the variable that I want to create and in this case I won't put any value there I just put none which is basically not a number and then when I <coughs> execute we have the empty empty Celsius column here available for us okay uh, so in lesson three we learned how to do four loops uh, and now we will see how we can actually loop over the rows in our data frame. That might be quite useful in, in some cases that you can actually 
uh, look through the, the rows rows in the data and do, for example, some kind of uh, classification or some calculations between uh, certain, certain values in, in the rows and so on. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, in, in Pandas, uh, it works quite similarly as when using for loops in, in, in regular Python code. Uh, but in here, we need to be aware of something uh, that I will shortly uh, tell you. So again, as, as always, how you specify a loop is with this for uh, key word. And then this works similarly as, was it last week or two weeks ago when I told you about, uh, it was in the extra lesson video about this uh, enumerate function in Python. So this works in a similar manner. Uh, so what we specify is that for idx, so the index value uh, of the row goes into this variable and then with the second variable we actually uh, insert the actual values from that row. And how we actually uh, iterate over. So in uh, pandas we have this uh, iter rows uh, function. So what this will do is it, it works in a similar manner as any, any for loop in Python uh, but instead of uh, returning only the kind of uh, values from, from this row as a pandas series you will also have the index value of that row, which is really useful in, in many cases, as we will see. So this is uh, how we will define the, the loop for loop in, in uh, pandas. And we can, for example, see that if I will print the index of, of that uh, data frame, it should print all the indices in, in our data. Uh, what I will do here, just to demonstrate you, uh, is that instead of uh, actually printing all the indices, what I want to do is that I just want to check when I execute this loop, what is the first index, uh, what comes out of the, the loop uh, when we are first iterating. So we use this uh, kind of Python keyword break, which is a function or not function, uh, this kind of command that when the loop hits this break, it will not continue the loop, it will end it there. And basically this is way how we can actually go into the loop, print the index here and then stop, which can be quite useful if you have like 50 million records, you don't actually want to print all of them but only, only the first one to actually see that this works. So let's do that. So now I will execute this and OK. And it seemed that it worked. So we actually started iterating over the indices and we printed the index, which seems to be number zero. And indeed, the first index of our data is number zero. Uh, we don't have that many uh, actually observations in our data frame that I will do this as well without the break command so we can see that okay it printed out all the indices in our data and we seem to have 72 uh, uh, indices so from 0 to 71 uh, up to that one. Uh, let's also check if we print the index so uh, what we first printed was this variable, then what about this row? So what do we have inside there? So let's do so that I will uh, remove that one, the print index, uh, and then let's do so that I will now just print the row from here. Um, again, F9, and okay. So what this row has inside is basically a series of all those values 
in inside that row. Now we should have the row in memory, as you might remember, when you are creating a variable in, in for loop, uh, you are, it, it stays in the memory. So we should, when we click the row, we should get the same stuff out. We can also check what is the type of that row. Well, indeed, as I said, it seems to be pandas series. So just that you know. So in the for loop, we have the index and then we have the actual row uh, and the values. And we can, of course, get some specific uh, item from that. So for example, the time of that row. So we can get the uh, value value from that column on that row with by uh, as, um, assigning to its uh, name. Cool. Uh, so the uh, idea was to basically use the function that we uh, have here. So the far to Celsius. So let's see how we, we can do that. So we continue by using this uh, for loop that we showed here. Uh, what we want to do next is that we want to actually convert the Fahrenheit temp to Celsius. So I will create a variable called Celsius equals to and what we are now doing is that we actually want to use the function that we have. So how do you call a function uh, and execute it? Uh, is that for the Celsius? So like this. So you just uh, use the name that you uh, of of the function, and then inside the parentheses, you should define what is the uh, input Fahrenheit temperature that you want to use. So in our case, what is the uh, input uh, temperature? Well, it's this temp that we have here and how do we do that so how we actually uh, insert the temperature from that row is that we indeed in a similar manner as we took the time here we actually took the temp from that and let's see how what do we have at this point so what i will do is that i just execute this and then print out the outcome or the, the value from that Celsius and then I stop. So, so that we see what is happening. And indeed, now we, it seems that the first, uh, so 58 Fahrenheit seems to be around 40 Celsius and seems to be about right. So this is how we can use functions that we have created ourselves. And now what we have is that we have the kind of uh, uh, the value from using that. So the return value from that uh, function that we used inside this Celsius variable. But of course, when we are dealing with data frames, usually you want to insert that value back into back to the data frame that you are working on. So let's see what, how, how we can do, do that. Uh, we have already seen this before. So what we need to do is that we basically specify that insert that value at index, whatever we are uh, going through. So at this index here. So on that position, add this value into column X. And where we want to actually assign it to is this new Celsius column that we created. So let's do that. So add the value to the data frame. So uh, what we want to do is that we have the data in this data, uh, data frame. And how was it possible to update certain uh, uh, column and, and certain uh, at certain position is that we use this data dot lock uh, kind of functionality, and then 
we specify that at what position do you want to add it. So in our case, we want to add it at that index that we are actually looping over. So at position index to uh, column Celsius. So here you specify what is the column that you want to update equals to the variable Celsius that we have here. So this way we are actually updating the Celsius column with the uh, converted temperature. And let's see if it works. So I just select this, these rows and then execute it. And great, we didn't receive any errors. And let's see about our data. Let's print out, uh, let's say, mm, first 10 rows. So inside the head you can also specify how many rows do you want to actually print out. So now we print out 10. And okay, it seems that we it, it worked. So we used our function and converted these temperatures into, into Celsius and, and that's that's great. Now we have uh, for our fins we, we understand these uh, Celsius temperature better than those uh, Fahrenheit's and we can move on. Uh, what we can still do, uh, the, the wind speed is uh, miles per hour. Uh, I'm not that familiar with, with miles, uh, I'm more familiar with meters per second uh, kind of wind speed. Uh, so let's change the wind speed and gust into that uh, uh, measure or format. Uh, how we can do that is that we have this uh, simple uh, formula like this. So you can convert meters to, uh, per second from miles with this formula. So miles per hour times 0 0.44704. Uh, so let's do that. Convert. Uh, wind speed to meters per second. So I will just update the speed column. So data square bracket speed equals to data square bracket speed. So we are using the actual values from that column and what we are doing here is that we want to multiply it with the 0, 0 0.44704. So with this formula, we can execute and, and convert the wind speeds into more intuitive ones for, for us. And indeed, now instead of having this uh, six miles per hour, now we have, for example, the first rows are two meters per second wind speed. Let's do the same uh, for the gust uh, variable quickly. So I just copy and, and paste and then change the speed to gust. And like this, and then again I execute. So now also that variable should be well. Now actually, we see that there is a lot of uh, non values in gust. Let's see, we print out, let's print the first 30 rows of our data. So now we can see that, okay, uh, during the night time, there seems to be some no data, but then there's start to happen something and we actually have some data in here. Uh, and when we are looking at the data here, uh, we can actually see that how, when we compare the times uh, and, the, and when we have the data in this gust uh, variable, it seems that those values are recorded only at the kind of hourly level. So at 2 a.m. we have one value, at 3 a.m. the second, 
at 4 a.m., the uh, third one and the so on. So, of course, and, and the other wind speed, they are recorded at uh, 0, 0 sharp, 20 past, 50 pass, and then the second. So we have uh, this kind of mismatch between the sampling rate in our data. So this is recorded hourly and this is every 20 minutes. And if we would like to compare these two, we actually need to deal with this somehow. And what is the kind of one way of doing it, and then maybe the preferable one, is that we aggregate the, uh, these uh, wind speed and the temperatures uh, from 20 minutes intervals into uh, the hourly level level data. So let's see how we can we can do that. Uh, first of all, so we have the information available in this time uh, variable here. So first four characters that we have here is the year, then we have the, the month, and then we have the day, and then we have the hour, and the last two characters are actually the minutes. So what we want to do here is that we want to actually slice the all but the last two characters from this time uh, into a separate uh, variable. Uh, and then, because then we have the data in, on an hourly level, and then we can actually group by those hours all the values and calculate the uh, average temperatures, average uh, wind speed, and, and so on. So that's the idea that what we are actually going to do, do next. Uh, let's see. So, first of all, uh, if we were looking at the data types. So we can see that the time at the moment is integer. So of course, if we have a number, we cannot slice it. But if we have a, a text, we can actually slice pieces from that text. And we can take advantage of, of that when actually doing this. So uh, slice uh, time based on characters. So first we need to convert the data, uh, the time into strings. So we have already seen this. So how we can do that is that we have uh, data time equals to data. Uh, well, not, let's not update that one, but we actually create a new one. Let's create a time uh, underscore str a string. Uh, no, that is not what I want to do. I want to create. No, yeah, that is what I want to do. Sorry. Uh, time string equals to uh, time data time dot as type. So this is the function that we can use to convert from data type to another. And let's see what happens. So now we should have a new uh, variable here called time string, and we can see from the data types that it seems to be object type here. So it's something different than than a number, and it is basically a string that we have. Uh, then uh, what we want to do next is that we want to slice that time string. So if we, as I explained earlier, so, oh, come on. So, yeah. So now in this column here, it looks similar than what we have in this time arrival, but actually what we have here are strings instead of number. And now we just want to select uh, the first 10 uh, basically characters from here and drop out the last two. So we can do that by doing this kind of uh, string selection and doing the slicing. And in Pandas, uh, you can do that by... So uh, again, I will say that create a vari variable called uh, time underscore d as date 
uh, and age as hour. So we have the date and then we have the hour. And then what I want to do is that I want to slice the data uh, from that time string that we created here. And how you can use all these kind of string manipulation functions in, in, in Pandas data frame is that you put dot str as string and then another dot. And then we have this function called slice. So this is similar as uh, taking an index, index using index of, of uh, taking from, from a string in, in Python. Here we have two parameters called start. So from which position of that uh, string character you want to start and where do you want to stop? So what is the last one? And in our case, we start at zero and stop at 10. So let's do like that. <coughs> and what we have now, so indeed now we have this time dh and if we compare for example this first uh, row here to that one so we can see that we indeed uh, dropped the two last characters from that time string uh, let's still make another column called data uh, time so let's just take the hour from, from that text. So we use the same approach as, as with the earlier one, time string dot str dot slice. So what I want to slice now is to just take the last, uh, well, not the last two, but the kind of uh, characters starting from position 8 and stopping at the same position 10. So what we want to do is to just kind of isolate the hour information from, from this. And let's see what do we have. Okay, it worked. And then when we check the uh, head, so now we can see that indeed now we have the hour information in here. Uh, let's do so that let's also just convert it back to back to a number. So I just copy and paste and say that dot as type integer. And let's execute. And let's check the data. Yep, now we have only the kind of integer value. Uh, so this is the midnight or the uh, from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. And, and this is 1 a.m. And, and so on. So now what we can do is to actually take advantage of these uh, hourly data or this hourly information and date information and, and aggregate the data. And how we can do that is to use this kind of group by function. So let's aggregate the data with group by function and I will first create an empty data frame for our data and how we can do that so this is where we will store the average temperatures and so on so I just call PD data frame and assign that to this aggregate data uh, uh, attribute. Um, if we check what it has, it doesn't have anything. It's an empty data frame and that's what it should be. Uh, now we can group the data uh, based on the, the hourly information. So basically based on the date and, and the hour here. So we can create this kind of variable called grouped. So it says that we are actually grouping something. So we can use this data dot group by uh, function and basically we need to specify what is the column that we want to uh, group by the values. So in our case, 
we want to kind of isolate these three rows, for example, that has the same hour data. So we use the time uh, underscore dh to do the grouping. Time uh, dh. And let's see. Now we have this uh, grouped function here. And let's see how we can actually iterate over those groups. So in a similar manner as you can iterate over the rows, you can actually iterate over those groups of data that we have now uh, kind of done. So let's iterate over those. Uh, in the materials, there's also information how you can just select a specific group from that one, but we will skip that to save some time. So in a similar manner uh, as, as before, uh, with iterating rows. So here we actually have the key. So basically the information from this time underscore dh variable and then we have the... let's go here a little bit. And then we have the group uh, in grouped. And let's... oops. Let's see what happens here when we print when we print the key and when we print the group variable so these two from here and again I used break uh, command to stop after the first group so that we will just see what we have so okay so first we print the key so the key seems to be the variable or the, the value from this time the H variable and then the group what is it we can see type group well it is a data frame and we can use all the functionalities that we can use with data frames so basically now we have the three values so one group of data and we can actually uh, calculate mean standard deviation whatever from those three rows so we can actually aggregate the data as what is as the what is the kind of aim here so let's now do so that we update uh, this accurate data so aggregated data which is a new pandas data frame and insert those uh, average values of our variables into that one so it works again in a similar manner as with the uh, iterating uh, over rows. Uh, so I will just do so that I aggregate aggregate the data. So I will use the values from that group. Uh, let's see so that I will make a variable called mean values equals to. So use that group data frame that we create at each iteration. Uh, then inside here, what are those variables that I want to uh, basically take the average from? Well, we can take the direction, uh, we can take the speed, we can take the um, gust, uh, we can take the temperature and at least the Celsius. And of course, we can also take the uh, average from the time, uh, which is of course will be always the same, but we, let's do that as well. So now what we are doing here is that we will sign those uh, uh, or take those variables and calculate the mean. So we will take the mean out of each one of these uh, kind of variables that we have here. And what we want to do next is that we want to... Uh, let's maybe see first what do we have here. So, um, so print mean values. So 
yeah, what we have is that we have this kind of series with the mean uh, values in, in these different uh, variables here. And what we want to do next is that we want to actually assign those uh, values into this new data frame that we created. Uh, first of all, uh, we can see that we don't have the actual date time information in there. So we want to first add that into this, uh, into this uh, series. We can do that by saying that mean values Uh, and then what is the name? So it's the time dh equals to uh, the key. So we will add the key into there. And then what we will do is that we will add uh, those uh, that series into this new data frame. Add the data. Add the aggregated data into data frame. So what, how we can do that is to kind of take use of the good old append function that is familiar from when working with lists. So we can say that acker, not date, but data equals to acker aggregated data dot append and then say that what do we want to add there well it's that mean values that we used here then in addition we need to say that ignore index equals to true so this just doesn't take into account the original index of, of those individual groups instead we kind of will re create a new new index for our new data frame uh, this is not that important, but this is something to get this working. So there is more information about this in the in the website. And then when we uh, run this, we should we should have a new data frame with some aggregated data. Let's say let's see if we do have <coughs> indeed indeed we do. So now we have from 0 to 23. So now we have hourly data. So there is one row for each hour. And basically uh, that is uh, what we wanted to do. So now we have aggregated. There is still some stuff about finding uh, the outliers from the data. I wonder if we should have a small break at this point. So let's have a Let's try to keep it short as we don't have much time. So can we be back at 10, 2, 11? So a little less than 10 minutes.